Welcome back to the Making a Multi-Million Dollar Med Spa podcast, where we have real conversations about what it takes to run a successful business. Thank you for joining us as we share our day-to-day successes and even more importantly, failures and mistakes. Listen in as we host some of our peers, colleagues, and other experts in the field. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Hi, I'm Kat Toronto. Welcome back to the podcast, The Making of a Multi-Million Dollar Med Spa. And I'm here with Brenda Robbins, and she is just a powerhouse. I cannot wait for you all to meet Brenda, get to know her, and for her to have the opportunity to share with our listeners because she's taught me so much over the years and as she doesn't even know it, but how closely I, I follow her um, because of just her willingness to share and obviously the successes that you've had, Brenda, but also just really you're, you're just like kind <laughs> kind heart and willingness to come down to Kansas City and hang out yeah. every once in a while. Because yeah, you guys are fun. Yeah. <laughs> right. I gotcha. Yeah. Like fun people. Yeah, I'm, I'm there with you. So um just kind of getting started today. I'd love to hear, you know, I know that you've so you have two businesses and um actually you have two locations, but you have a plastic surgery clinic as well as an aesthetic center yeah. or med spa. And yeah. so just tell me a little bit about like, you know, you're in the beginning of the day, kind of what does your day look like at the clinic? Do you find yourself more behind the desk? Are you out and about with your team? What is that like? Yeah. So being my position is kind of director of operations and you're right. We have really two businesses, three locations, Des Moines Plastic Surgery, and then Coach Light Clinic and Spa, which is right next to Des Moines Plastic Surgery physically. But then we have another location about 30 miles away. And so depending on the day, right, um, I go out to Ankeny, which is 30 minutes away, that location at least once a week, uh, spend the day out there, talk to the manager, answer any questions, make sure things are efficient, talk to the people, get, you know, getting to know them. It's a fairly newer office. Just, you know, spending some time up there is, is really good and talking about how we're going to grow. That's the main thing that we kind of talk about is what's going on with the staff. How can we get people back into um, the practice to see them? Can we do any competitions with goals in mind and selling product and that sort of thing? And then the other days I spend probably half of the time behind the desk and I try to spend another half of the time just out and about and talking to people. I I am hoping in the future I get more of that because I find myself behind the desk even more and more and more. And so um, in the future, I hope to do more time in, you know, in front of the staff and in front of managers and things like that and just helping grow the business. Um, it is easy to get behind the desk and do a bunch of emails and phone calls and you know all the administrative stuff all day long. But um Yeah. So always looking at the strategic side of things as well. Um, The marketing person reports to me. So we're always talking about marketing. What are we going to do for the year? That's the time right now we're talking about budgeting for marketing. And what do we want to do? Because the staff is always wanting us to do this or that. We have great social media presence. Um, We use uh, support staff to externally to help us with some social media. Um, that helps because you can't be a jack of all trades when it comes to digital marketing. I feel like for sure. Sometimes I feel like I'm a jack of no trades when it comes. To <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think oh, I'm getting better at this. I'm like oh, yeah, <laughs> like I fall I down the too. hill. Yeah. <laughs> the people that know what they're doing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so important. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about growth. So you're talking to, you know, you're talking to your team members. And first off, I have to say, you know, I think it's, you know, it's, it is so easy to get stuck behind the desk because there's like so many things going yeah. on, but you taking that amount of time, you know, half your day and then full day at Ankeny and, um, you know, what, what do you see the benefits are when you do take that time and you're just like, okay, I'm gonna take half the day. I'm gonna get out there. And what what benefit do you see? Like, why did you choose to do that? Well, you know, it's hard too because we're so busy. Our providers are in the rooms, 
like most of the day. So <laughs> you might be out and about, but you might not even see them because they're just in and out. And then you try to talk to them and they're busy, which I want them to be busy, right? You know, I, I want them to be in the room most of the day. And so um, the, our front desk is our the first person people talk to, the first person people see. And so um, I've recently had to spend more time up there, which is really good for me because I get to see where we can make some efficiencies. You know, I appreciate the job that they're doing because it is so important. I get to see how busy they are at certain times of the day where maybe we might need some more support. And just a lot of things like that, that if you're not there, you don't see that. And it's good as an owner to see the the struggles that they might have during the day that you could, you could maybe fix, you know, with a simple configuration on the software behind the scenes to make their lives easier on a few things, getting a faster printer, getting a faster computer, Mm -hmm. you know, little things like that, that really help. But, you know, we all, we all know you and I both know that our staff are our assets, right? And so if they're not happy, you're, I'm not happy. Basically. Oh my gosh, <laughs> burnout, you know, especially in that position where if it's the constant flow in and the constant flow out and the questions and the, the struggles that yeah. come with, um, you know, software programs and, and all of those things. I mean, it really is looking at how can we avoid the burnout? Yeah, you know, for sure. Mm-hmm. They need to get up and walk, walk a lap. Go like, walk, go yeah. walk your, lap. Your, your watch is telling you to stand up. <laughs> yeah. Oh my go gosh. Up. I'm so tired of my Apple watch shaming yeah. me. I know. You I can still do mine. it. It's 1159 <laughs> at night, but you could still make it. <laughs> I had to turn that off. It was just annoying me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, let's talk about, um, you know, you, I'm going to step back to the growth piece and the conversations that you're having right now with your marketing team and and your providers. And when you consider doing things like whether it's a promotion for the month or a membership and interested to think, to hear about what you think about that, you know, mm-hmm. what type of uh, promotions or is the membership do you think that has been the most successful? We started doing a membership program, I would say three or four years ago on the clinical side of things, because we have a spa too. And we have, a, we had a membership with that, but we kind of stopped doing it. Um, but on the clinical side, we see that getting people into a membership and for ours is you pay it up front for that mm-hmm. whole year. Um, we don't have our system isn't easy to do like a monthly um, charge on their card for a membership. So we do like it's almost like a package up front, but we call it a membership and it has everything they need in there to maintain healthy anti-aging skin for the year. And it's um, not really customized, but we feel like we have our, our halos, our, our BBLs, our hydrofacials, our products in there that we can kind of massage a little bit, but the price is about the same for um, each person. So we call that our, our membership, which is great because then they have it, it's paid up front and then they come in at certain times of the year. You know, you got to do your treatments every so often in order to maintain that anti-aging um, face of yours that you, you know, you know, you want to keep ongoing. So I'm going to dig some details out of you on this because we have, well, I'm not going to go into that. I just want to know. Um, so when you set up this yearly program, so you mentioned Halo BBL um, skincare and you can adjust it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so is there one set price or can they buy in at different levels? How does that work? So we have three levels, like um, I can't remember what they're called because we changed them recently. So that was someone who doesn't want to spend, it's like a, not, not a lot of money, a little bit of money, mm-hmm. really like you need two halos and, you know, four BBLs and you need all this skincare. So, um, and then those in between like hydrofacials that you like to have for main, maintaining as well. So yeah, we have three different levels, which seems to accommodate most people. And those were really created by our estheticians because they see enough that. people that they know what consistently what they're doing for those people who at different budget levels, really. Mm -hmm. And so at these three different budget levels, do they get to the same level of discount? Yeah. So, um, the same level of discount, but the number of treatments is different. Okay. And then also it's a better value as you move up. 
for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then you also get 10% off any other treatments that you want to do injectables, um, product ongoing, you buy more product, that type of thing. Okay. So within those three packages, there are no, there, the injectables are not included at all. It's lasers, okay. hydrofacials, at home skincare. I love yeah. that. You know, yeah. we have this program that's not, a, we don't call it a membership at all, which is why I love what you're saying, because we offer it. It's the only package that we offer year round and it's, we call it the stay forever young package, but it's BBL <laughs> halo and hydrofacials. Um, but there's only one, well, there's two levels, but still, I just, I like how you're presenting it and then how it gives them 10% off of other things, because this past year we've been, we've been look, looking back on it to see how many times have we offered that, how many people are booking it, are, are they rebooking? And we found that it's not as successful as we thought it would be. And yeah. so when we talked to our team, they were like, well, I'd like to be able to do this instead. They'd like to be able to do that instead. And, um, and so yeah. maybe just giving, you know, one more option or also giving them that discount off yeah. would help the team to, to, to look at it as like this yearly plan. And honestly, when you put that under a membership umbrella, it switched in my brain. Mm-hmm. Like, even though we've been offering something similar, yeah. it's just be called a membership, but it's still just right. done your same software. Right. It's really a package. Yeah. So you know? smart. So, and they can massage it a little bit because some, you know, providers like a certain product better than the other, and that's okay. They'll, we'll just discount it and make it fit mm-hmm. into that. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. So talking about products, what are your most successful product lines? Um, I would say most recently, um, Elastin is probably our most successful line and um, Zio. We have a lot more Zio products. Um, It seems like it's more of our anti-aging line and the Elastin is more of our post-treatment line. So Uh post-treatment lasers and things like that. Yeah, that that. makes sense. But, But they love both of those for sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so looking at technology and products and treatments and software or mar- you know, what, whatever part of what we do, when you look at kind of your day to day or what we're going to be implementing in the future, what are you the most excited about right now? Um, well, we hope to add some more clinic rooms, um, to grow. So we're excited about that. Um, the providers are also excited because they feel like they have to book so far out now with their patients because we don't have enough rooms and, and equipment t- to get people in sooner. And so sharing, you know, they're sharing a lot of uh, equipment. So we're excited about that. Um, and on the surgical side of things, we're excited about bringing on another surgeon, hopefully this fall. Uh, so kind of ramping up and getting ready to to bring on another surgeon, which will be It'd be a big deal for us. So it's Definitely. always been, you know, Dr. Robbins for, you know, 20 years. And so <laughs> bring, <laughs> bring another body in. <laughs> Although he's, he's still the only man here. So <laughs> <laughs> you can find a female surgeon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We hope so. yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, well, that just reminded me, you didn't, did you take his name? I didn't officially. I, it depends I didn't on who I so. talked to. What's that? Okay. I, 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 you know, I said that earlier. And then when you said that, I thought, wait a second, I'm not so sure. I didn't officially, but if I talked to, it depends on who I talk to. If I'm out and about with friends or whatever, I use Robbins when I'm at work, I just always use bone and camp. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't want to be looked at as, you know, the doctor's wife. I have a job here and I take it very seriously, um, and very personally. And so I don't want people to think that, oh, she's just working here, you know, cause that's, that's his wife, but right. I don't have the business background. I love what I do. I love building up businesses. We, um, we've done a couple other businesses on the side and I loved working for them, that, that business too. So, yeah. Well, I definitely am going to talk, you know, um, in the intro to the podcast, a little bit more about your background, but if you don't mind sharing, you know, kind of the size, because you mentioned you want more clinic rooms, you know, how big is your clinic now? How many rooms do you have now? Oh my gosh. listeners an idea, or if you want to talk about gross revenue, anything like that, happy to hear yeah. that as well. Attention aesthetic professionals, mark your calendar for the Mint Aesthetics Virtual Immersion Training Day on June 16th. 
Join me that Friday for a deep dive training covering the details of BBL, Halo, and combination treatments. Designed for owners and providers alike, the day will cover technology, settings, technique, and post-care, all for one price for your entire team. In the morning, we have a special guest with a dedicated topic to give you a focused look into the operations of a medical aesthetic practice. From marketing to treatment skills, we will bring you the experts who have made our own clinics so successful. Register to attend the virtual immersion course at mintaesthetics.com slash group dash training. We'll see you there. Yeah, we have um, 15 clinic rooms. Some of them are spa though. So we have uh, four spa rooms and then the rest are clinic. Um, and then we have the, the, the surgery side of things, which is separate. But uh, yeah, so we moved to this building in 2017 um, and we were at another location. We could have stayed there, but we wanted to grow and um, wanted to invest in ourselves as well. So we built, bought the land, built the building and um, we kind of, I mean, we didn't think we'd be growing out of it in five years, five, six years, you know? So, Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. And we, I started when we had two people. And I was front desk. I was playing nurse in the consults. I was doing marketing. I was office manager. I would, you know, the jack of all trades back then. And so growing from like two, three staff to now we have um, a 37 to 40 or so. We have a couple outstanding new hires that we want to hire. So about 40 employees. Brenda, you have done so much. And to just to hear, you know, you've played all the roles, you know, you've filled all of those shoes. And I think, it's just yeah. so helpful to have done that, to know what's going on in the rooms, what should be, you know, what's going on at the front desk, because you've done all of that. And, you know, at, at first it was hard to give it up in a way, because you want to have so much control over your own business and what's going on. So it was hard at first to let go of those responsibilities, let go of someone else managing the people and all that. But I've been really blessed to, to um, have some really great office managers that have really represented the, you know, just the company and the staff and being supportive of the staff and all that. So we've really been blessed that way. So how does it feel now that you've let go? It's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I've got good days and bad days. But, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. I, um, you get used to it after a while and you just have to let, sometimes you just have to let things go. You know, even though you might not agree with things, just like, I got to let it go, you know, because yeah. it's not worth to, you know, at least lose sleep over it. It's the best thing, you know, for the company to do so this or that or mm-hmm. whatever. So, yeah. I love that. I really think about, you know, I mean, cause there are certain things that I'm still um, even letting go of mm-hmm. and, yeah. um, but to look at and not, and, and, you know, I mean, for multiple reasons, but Um, just, I, I love looking at my team and focusing on like every success that I get to help and support is like just a success for the whole company, which Mm -hmm. then feels like it's a success for me too. Even if I didn't really have anything to do with it, (laughs) I'm like, just, I want you to be so successful. And then I get to like, it's just so great. It kind of takes some of the, like, then I'm like, here you go. And here you go. And here you go. You know? Mm -hmm. And they are just, yeah. I mean, so our team like yours is just so amazing and so much smarter than me. And it's like, it's just, it's fun to see that growth without letting go. For sure. And you know, the, the staff, they would say, well, I hardly see you, Brenda. So when I talk about like, I spend time, I, I don't spend half my time with my staff. I'm thinking about them. I'm thinking, I'm looking at what are they doing and what is their, you know, return rate of customer, what, how much are they selling? And are they kind of meeting expectations? And just and when, when you're married to someone and, you know, like you and Matt, you know, Dave and I talk about our staff all the time. We think about the business all the time. So it's almost too much. You know, you have to really step away from the business so that you can have a, a life um, and not right. talk about it constantly. But I'm always, that's I'm, my, the staff is always on my mind and I'm always looking at the staff and what they're doing and making sure they have what they need and things like that. And when do we need another machine and why isn't that one being used? And do we need to move on to something else? And, 
you know, those types of things that you have to think about from a business perspective. So because the, the staff, they want to use the best machines out there, they're going to give the best results. And that's what we want to offer too. start offering things that don't provide good results. Then you just get a bad name and we don't want that at all. Definitely. Well, I can always tell when something is really going to do great because our team wants the treatment. They will come in early or stay late to have it done, or they somehow work each other in during the day. They want their family members to have it. You know, yeah. um, it's like those things. I'm like, this is going to be amazing. And because they're like me, I mean, I don't, I can't, I do not want to sell or talk about anything that I don't fully believe in. Right. And I would never want or ask them to do that either. Right. For sure. Um, but so, you know, you'd mentioned earlier talking about incentives for your team or competitions that you put together and, you know, what do those look like? What do you find that your team responds the best to or makes them kind of feel the most success or work the hardest type of thing? Well, whenever there's a monetary, uh, you know, reward at the end, that's what makes them roll. And <laughs> we do more of that in Ankeny because we're trying to grow um, and we've done it some not more not recently in West Des Moines, because we have so many staff. Um, but do want to, we talked about, do want get, to get back to that, you know, where you, everybody's working towards a goal. And so if you have that, if you make that goal, then you get this. Mm-hmm. Last, we did that last year when um, Ellergan with Cool Sculpting, you know, if, if you made your goal, every you got $15 extra per cycle for everyone that you, you know, if you met your goal and then beyond that. And so all of that money that Allergan was going to give us as a business, we just gave it back to the staff and said, you make your, you guys all make the goal. And then if you go beyond that, every cycle that you, you know, that we get $15, you're getting it. You know, it's, it's not like, it, it was just like a competition, which awesome. was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, um, so we do a spring competition over three months. So January, February, more of my competition. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, if they're the personality that's similar to me, I get it, you know, um, but yeah, I, I, I love to kind of hear what other clinics are doing because we're always looking at, you know, what can we do differently? What could, you know, make things a little bit more fun and kind of remind everybody while we're here. Yeah. Or if you have like a new product and you want everybody to one, use it themselves, but also sell it. So if we had a new product and we want everybody to educate their patients on it then we'll do like a goal you you have to sell this many in this month and you know then you get this or something Mm -hmm. yeah very cool so is there anything that you've you know as you've grown from just a couple people to 15 rooms you know thinking back to some of the technology whether it's a laser that made a big impact or maybe it's a software program or it's something like friend media or rx photo or you know, your EMR or, um, Vizia, you know, is there, is there any little or not little, maybe something that seemed a little bit became big that's made, you know, that you can think, Oh, I'm so glad we did that. Yeah. Um, cool sculpting. We were the first people in Iowa to offer cool sculpting and we had the biggest art when we're at the other office, we had almost a hundred people attend our January because we had just gotten it like that previous, the fourth quarter, Mm -hmm. and now we were kind of doing it and we were ready for an event. And so we had an event, had so many people, we couldn't even get them in the door. It was freezing outside, (laughs) you know, and they couldn't close the doors because people were standing in the, it was just a smaller office. So we had people down the hallways and it was- Wow, what a great problem. Yeah, everybody was so excited to hear about this new, you know, non-surgical fat reduction technology. And I, it was in within two months, we bought another machine. So and when it was, it just went gangbusters for several years. It mm-hmm. was crazy. And so yeah. that kind of was our non-surgical experiment. You know, we mm-hmm. spent a lot of money on that machine. We ended up buying another one and it was well worth it. So then that kind of made Dr. Robbins think about, well, hey, this non-surgical stuff is pretty good. I don't have to work as hard. And when I'm on vacation, I can still make some money, you know? (laughs) And that's when we started investing in other machines as well. Oh, so how is, are you, and you're still offering cool sculpting? Yeah. Yeah. The elite version. Mm -hmm. And do you like it? 
your team still likes it. Yeah. Yeah. We ended up have, we have one machine here and then one in Ankeny as well. It's not, you know, it's a little, um, overpopulated, I guess, with machines in our area. So, you know, we're not the only ones anymore. So a lot of people have it. So you have a lot of competition, but we've been doing it the most. We try to advertise, you know, we've done the most cycles we're the most experienced and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still busy with it. Yeah. We've had a similar experience. So with the, um, laser piece or, you know, what is your, what is, or not even laser, but just kind of overall revenue, whether it's injectables, lasers, cool sculpting, that non-surgical, uh, medical aesthetic practice, what are the most popular treatments? Mm -hmm. Um, Botox is the most popular, uh, Dysport is becoming more popular. Um, not at the same level as Botox is, but I call Botox our gateway drug. Mm -hmm. get them in and you get them hooked on Botox and you cross sell to other services. Um, It's easy because people are wanting, they're doing Botox because of their wrinkles. And so when you have other services that also will help with that, like your lasers and even the filler and things like that, it's just easy to cross sell in those situations, but Mm -hmm. definitely, you know, Botox has just become, it's just so popular and, and it's not um, people talk about it now. You know, it's, yeah. it's not shamed like it used to be, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's highlighted yeah. on TikTok and Instagram reels and, right. you know, it's <laughs> like, they want to film it while they're having it now. I mean, yep. that mm-hmm. part of our business alone is so different. Mm-hmm. I know. And I'm all about that. I'm like, like, can I film this? Yeah. And yeah. you can post it and you can share it and you can do all, whatever you yeah, want. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do you want me to hold the camera for you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we get someone in here to help with that. We can do some good angles and yeah. <laughs> get the light right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, well, when you think back, you know, over, over the last few years, what do you think have been one or two of like your growing moments? What, what have the struggles been or the learning moments? Um. I would say just, and I hate to mention COVID, but you know, when we had to close and just dealing with, like, I was super busy when we were closed, but no one else was because they're all at home. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, on the business side, we're thinking about how can I get my PPP loan? What do I need to do? You got to gather all this information. What's legal? What's not legal? What about medical and dental? So on the business side, like I was super busy talking with all of our insurance and, you know, payroll and legal and all that stuff. Um, so learning that that was beneficial because, you know, our, our staff appreciated being paid and us getting that PPP loan right away, instead of having to go on unemployment, you know, and then maybe later getting that your, your pay from the PPP loan. But, um, that was, I, and then just when we came back, we, um, kind of anticipated, um, cause we had to reschedule so many people we ended up doing online booking while we were closed and implemented that. And it has been the best thing since then. We do so much online booking. It is crazy. There's no way we could have so many providers and be so full without that. Which um, online booking system do you use? Um, Next, um, I think it's next patient. We use like several different back office programs. Yeah. So with that, okay. So let's say, can anyone, any client patient that wants to book an appointment, whether they've been there or not book online. Yeah. But there's not all treatments can be booked. Um, you can be a new uh, patient or an existing patient and you can book Botox fillers, hydrofacial facials, our facials, um, Vizia skin analysis, you know, consults, Mm -hmm. Things that have a definite like time frame, whether it's a half an hour or an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some like cool sculpting. We can't book that online because it depends on how many cycles you're doing and things like that, where there it varies. We can't book those, but you know, we have a ton of people just going online to book Botox and fill it. Yeah. I mean, I, we've been talking about this for a, honestly a few years, which that sounds kind of sad. I know, but it's just always like the, the, this is why I'm asking these details because it's some of these details that have held us back, mm-hmm. um, and figuring out the best, the best method and then not 
losing out on like, would it have been better to book them as a consultation or would it be better just to get them in for Botox and then book the consultation? You know, these types of questions that I yeah. think, you know, and it sounds like you're telling me no matter what across the board, it's like one of the best things you've ever done. Yes. I mean, hundreds are booked. I mean, it's crazy. And then, and then they can, they'll do it in the middle of the night. They do it on the weekends, whenever they're sitting watching, watching TV. That's what's nice about it is that they don't have to wait till you're open and they're working as well. I mean, we have so in every, we get an email every time someone books the reception gets an email just to verify like everything is there. We send their paperwork, you know, we text them their paperwork. It's just a good process and saved a lot of time for our staff. Yeah. I love that. Maybe I should have you on the e-course and you can teach an online booking <laughs> lesson. <laughs> Here are all the steps. Here's all the paperwork you need. You know, here's the program you should use. And then, <laughs> well, the thing is, like, we we chose we had to choose a software package that works with Next Tech because we use Next Tech, and mm -hmm. not everybody uses Next Tech. So we were limited, mm -hmm. but it does work well, though. Well, that's been our problem too because we use Patient Now. They have a closed. They don't have an open API, mm -hmm. um, but okay. they are apparently launching or have launched a new platform that can do some of these things and mm -hmm. um and some changes yeah. are supposedly coming but until they're done you know they don't really matter until it's buttoned yeah. up and we can use it so yeah. um but yeah so I I'm just really curious about that because I think I mean I am that person I get on and book my son's haircut at yeah. like 10 45 at night you know right. when I'm thinking about it but and if I it's just so much it's just easy when yeah. you think about it you can do it so I I definitely see the value in it Aesthetics, we understand that your schedule can be demanding. That's why our eCourse training programs provide you with the flexibility to learn at your own pace, wherever and whenever you want. Whether you're at home on the couch, out of the country, or in between client treatments, Mint Aesthetics makes it convenient for you to expand your aesthetic skills. Take advantage of the opportunity to advance your career through treatment technique, improved results, clinic operations, and more. Visit our website at minesthetics.com to explore our wide range of online e-courses. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, very valuable. And I'm the same way. You know, it's like being on Facebook at night and like, do I really need to buy that? Why not? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then you can say, a glass of wine. I'll uh, take two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, is there anything else you want to talk about before we end today? Anything that, um, that maybe came up during the conversation that we didn't touch on or something you thought about before that I didn't ask? I don't think so. I mean, I, I think just really, if you're growing, if your business is growing, um, you guys got to have the support staff there to support what you're growing into. And, um, that's probably the important thing. And, you know, training, training is so important as well. We send our staff to you guys for training all the time. I think just one of our staff is going there on Monday. I saw that. We appreciate yeah. that. We're excited. Yeah. I mean, you're, for us, it's close. Um, and we've had really good training there. So um, that's the other thing, you know, you're growing, you got to make sure your, your staff is trained, not only on the services, but just credentialing. And knowing the business and knowing the services is so important. Well, definitely. And I think, you yeah. know, how you were saying, kind of knowing your business now and then looking to the future. And, you know, we both have been working through a new partnership with CPP. And so, you know, I think if there's if there's any comment you want to share about that, you know, we'd love to hear it. Um, so CPP is Cosmetic Physician Partners and, you know, working to bring on clinics from all over the country. The goal for 2022 was five clinics. I think we um, closed, there's 14 clinics that joined in that 12 month process. So it's just like growing faster than CPP could have ever imagined. And I've loved it because I've gotten to see you, even if it's just on a call or see your name pop up and and yeah. so I just really um, enjoy working with you and there are other partners like, you know, Dr. Jay Burns and Dr. Joel Cohen and so many great people that have joined. Yeah. Um, and so maybe just share, you know, what was it that draw, drew you to, to doing something like that with a clinic that's already so successful yeah. that you guys are up and going and, you know, you definitely don't need to join a group. Um, 
I think that it was just, we were ready for some additional support on the business side of things. Our onboarding for new staff is so easy now. I mean, I just little things that you just don't realize that take you so much time, just finding someone, doing the interviews, getting them in here, and um, then onboarding with all of the stuff that you have to onboard them with. It's just that process has been great. And just the support um, is what we, we, we liked about CPP, knowing that we could still run the business as we run our business, because mm-hmm. we know how, obviously, right? That's why we chose them and they chose us. Um, and not having to report to anybody on a day-to-day basis. You know, we're still doing our thing. We're still, you know, keeping the wheels on and doing what we need to do. But just we have that added support on the business side, which is so nice. And that's how I kind of explained it to the staff. I said, you know, I support, we continue to support you with training, with machines and whatever you need. We need to make some changes on the business side because in a few years, we're going to be above 50 employees. And I don't want to deal with that. All the legal stuff that goes around with, you know, having more than 50 employees and the accounting has been, was too much and the HR stuff ended up being so much. And so just all that side of things is really nice to have. Um, on I think I, I have also loved so many of the, the things that you spoke about or shared. But one thing I do want to comment about is the hiring process, because no matter if you're a clinic that has three people or five people or you're a clinic that has 40 people, you know, finding the right team member makes all the difference. And so um, just as we had finished signing with CPP, we had two hires we needed to make. And so I thought I'm going to try the CPP mm-hmm. way. Let's see. Let's see what happens. And so I talked to the recruiter and um, within two weeks, I had multiple interviews. I hired one of those spots within three weeks, the other one within four weeks, and I was up and going and I spent yeah. very little time. Yeah. And That's they the are thing. amazing. Yeah. I mean, it has been, yeah, you don't realize how much time you're spending doing all those things when you can just say, okay, here's my job description. You do what you do and then let me know. And I'll have the in-person interview. And then here's your link to onboarding. And then they they do all link to onboarding. (laughs) (laughs) It's the little things. It's the little things. It means so much. you know, if you have any questions about legal stuff or HR stuff, you don't have to like call up an expensive lawyer and, you know, or an HR consultant or something. You're just, they're there and they're, that's why they're there. They're there to help you. So, right. I think the other thing that I have really enjoyed is the next level financial Mm -hmm. breakdown, all the data that comes through on every single procedure, every single provider, every minute. I mean, like as much data as you could possibly want and too much really, but is put given to us in a way that we can read and use and implement to grow. And I have, I mean, Daniel is ridiculously smart and I, I have loved that. And I, I just tell them like, tell me where I can improve. It's not going to hurt my feelings. Give me that first, you know? Like right. I, yeah. you know, I want to know the bad, like, come on, get, you know, <laughs> give me that. I want to see what can I change? How can I grow? You know, what can I do differently? Yeah. And, um, and so that's just, it's been really great for us as well. So yeah, we haven't gotten those reports yet, but we're looking forward to them this month. They said we were going to get some. So that's the thing too, is like with next tech, you can't get that data very easily. And so having them provide that and then explain what it means then we're just going to have a ton of ideas on, you know, how to grow and how to improve. I just know it. Right. I mean, we've already started to implement some. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Good. Good. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, we would love to have you guys down to Kansas City for some drinks. Okay. (laughs) Well, not 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 until next season. But But, um, the Super Bowl. I know. Good cheese. (laughs) Um, so thank you so much Brenda for being on today truly just respect you so much and you're just such a joy to have on thank you for sharing everything with our mint listeners and we'll see you soon at the cpp get together yes okay all right (laughs) right, take care thanks for listening to today's episode we would love it if you left a review to help other providers and clinics find us Also, if you want more information about anything we discussed in this episode, check out our show notes. Until next time, this has been the Making a Multi-Million Dollar Med Spa Podcast.